Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble <clears throat> stroke soldier shirt. So I'm going to do a video. Um, it's officially two months uh, of full week's work. So I've now finished two full months of generated stats for two full months. So I now have been able to provide a benchmark of where I'm at. First off, let me just say thank you to a new subscriber. Again, every time someone subscribes, if it comes up publicly who you are, I'm going to just check out your stuff real quick just to see what's going on. Um, and you are... Donald Kennedy. Hi, Donald. How are you today? Hopefully I didn't murder your last name, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, again, I'm one of the uh, smaller YouTubers you subscribe to, and thank you for joining our Merry Little Band of Stroke Folk. Um, there's been some interesting news lately. Some major celebrities have had strokes, or it's been reported they've had strokes. Luke Perry was one of them. Uh, all that's said in the news, he's had a massive stroke. Uh, for those of us that have had a stroke, massive or not, we know how debilitating it can be. So I doubt Mr. Perry uh, is ever going to see this. But Luke, if you do ever happen to see this and you happen to watch some of my content, so be it. Um, if you subscribe, so be it. And if you don't, so be it. I have no control over that. So let's just talk about two full months back to work. So it was a bit of a lengthy process. Over eight weeks, I went from three weeks, three hours a day, five days a week, to four hours a day, to six, seven, eight. So I've now completed two full weeks at eight hours a day. Uh, I've completed two full months of work. Granted, I haven't completed 40-hour work weeks each week because I was gearing up to it. But it's been two months of back to work. I've got two full months of statistics. Like most jobs, they keep statistics of how well you do. Um, mine are kept autom in an automated fashion. I'm in quartile one. That means I'm in the top 25% of all people where I work. Um, historically, I've been in the top 10%. Uh, was able to maintain that for, well, basically since the time I started in the location where I'm at up until I had the stroke. I was in the top 10% uh, of everyone that has my skill set globally through the company that I work for. Uh, so... I'll be honest, I was very concerned about how well I would perform. Uh, be it the ambient light, be it the transient noise, be it using computers, be it um, dealing with customers' questions, uh, various things that might frustrate me. I was actually very concerned of, of how well I would fare. Um, I'm actually surprised and I'm, I'm proud. I'm able to compete relatively on the same level as to where I was before the stroke. However, I'll be honest, there are days where I, it feels like I need to put in three times the effort to get half the result. There are days where I really feel like I might be struggling. There are days where I know I'm struggling. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't change the fact that I have an injured brain. I can't change the fact that I still need to go to work. I can't change the fact that I still need to be able to perform at the same level as I did before. I still have difficulty remembering everybody's name at work. There are people I, I still don't know their names. But that's a benchmark of a couple of things. One, I haven't had a conversation with you in eight months. Um, and if I had a conversation with you, it was fleeting and in passing and of no significant consequence. Um, two, you didn't take any effort to stay in contact with me during the, the period of time while I was off. Um, and I wasn't looking, seeking anybody out. I, I had my own bag to deal with. Um, there are still people at work that actively go out of their way to either ignore me or avoid me. I've noticed that. There's no, I, I can't change that. I just chalk that up to horrible human syndrome. Um, there are days that can be stumbly. There are days that can be difficult, but all in all, it, it hasn't been completely bad. There have, there have been very difficult days. If I had to do this over again, not that I would ever want to do this over again, but if, if, I, if I was to do it over again, 
I would be um, that's what I'm for. I'd be a bit more deliberate. Um, I would be more um, cautious. I would do probably a month at three or four weeks, or a month of three or four hours a day, and then go to two weeks at five hours, and then go to two weeks at six, and then go to two weeks at seven, and then go to two weeks at eight. If I had to do it over again, that's probably how I would do it. Um, my anomia still can be a problem at times. That is the biggest problem I have with my communication issues is I will have difficulty just retrieving the word. I know the word. Um, I just have difficulty retrieving the word. Happens on the phone when I'm dealing with customers because I am a technical support agent for a major telecommunications company here in Canada. So it will happen. I'm on the phone and I, I'm, I know the word is modem. <laughs> I can't think the word modem. <laughs> I know the I know the word is fill in the blank. I can't retrieve it, and these are things I deal with day in day out, time after time. Um, the apraxia really only hits me. I've noticed in the last, well, barring some asshole of an air horn, um, yeah, that's happened. Um, barring some asshole of an air horn, I the apraxia really only kicks in if I get really really tired at work. Um, the aphasia, the expressive aphasia, um, where I can't get the words out, again, it really only happens if I get overly tired or fatigued at work, or if there's some asshole with an air horn. I still can't remember reliably, independently, um, or distinctly remember about two weeks before the stroke to about seven to ten days after. Right. So, will those memories ever come back? I have no idea. I, I legit don't know. Um, I honestly don't know if those memories will ever come back. Sadly, it's not uncommon. It's not uncommon for people that have had a stroke to have a gap in memory. I'm making peace with it. You know? Um, and I can't really be held at fault for things that I have no control over. I have no control over the fact that I had a stroke. Yes, I smoked. Yes, I was a bit of a stress bag. Maybe I wasn't taking care of myself as best I could have. So I, I will own that, mea culpa. Is it my fault that I had a stroke? Yeah, I'll own the fact that I had a stroke, so to speak. Um, however, it's not my fault. It's, it's, it's not, you can't really hold me accountable because I have a brain injury and I can't remember things. I don't like it. It's just the reality. It's it's literally my new normal. Um, unless it was on Facebook or in a text conversation uh, or I journaled it or it was in an email. I'll be honest. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to remember. I, I really don't. And if I don't, I don't. There's nothing I can do about that. Just like the people at work. If I can't remember your name, I'm not losing sleep over it. I've dealt with the fact, due to a wonderful, talented individual who, if I was to call him a gentleman, might be casting aspersions on what little character he has, and and if you happen to see this, because I think you do subscribe, but I don't really know, but I think you do watch occasionally, if you happen to see this, I just rub my ears, have my goose fob a moment, and accept the fact there are things I may never be able to remember again. There are things that I know without context. There are things that I know I should know, but I can't remember. And and in time, some of those memory gaps will clear. In time, some of them won't. And I'm not going to lose sleep over what I can't remember, what I can remember, why I know things, why I know don't, why I, why why I don't know things. But you know, all in all, you just have to accept that. I mean, just like whatever whatever situation presents you in your stroke situation. Certain things are going to be unique to you, and you have to accept the fact that that is part of your new normal, right? The memories may come back. They may not. Um, so be it. Noticed the PBA. No, not PB&J. PB&A. Um, basically, emotional regulation. I did a video on it. I'll leave the link in the description below. Um, 
I still have problems with that. I almost broke down crying at work last week. I'm a trainer. Um, although I don't get to find out if I get to stay a trainer until the end of March. Um, I'm hoping that'll be the case. An agent was having problems uh, trying to sort something out. And he came up to me and said, hey, you're a trainer. And I went, beg your pardon? Hey, you're a trainer. You might be able to help me with this. And I'm like, you actually recognize the fact that I still have value. And I almost had to bite my lip a little bit. Um, uh, it was difficult. I almost broke down crying. Because <laughs> someone actually recognized the fact that, you know, I still have that value. Um, not everybody at work, I think, sees it that way. But then again, I don't know, because people don't really talk to me that much anymore. I, I've learned to keep my circle of friends really small, really tight, really close. <laughs> And that's about where that ends. So, but what have I learned throughout this whole strokiness, right? So, I've learned that you can fight through certain situations. I still get really bad headaches at times. I've learned I can fight through them at times. I've learned there's other times where I can't. Uh, I thought with two months of being at work, I might be able to inoculate myself um, to the ambient noise and sound. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, I, last week, I went and got a doctor's note to get a, a proper headset. I did the research on which headset might suit the bill. Um, sent that to our IT guy and said, hey, listen, would this work? Had a voice cover like face-to-face -face conversation with him. He said, yeah, that should work. Uh, what I'm going to say is if you need some kind of adaptive device or just something slightly better than the normal equipment issue scale um, that your work provides, get the doctor's note, do the research, point them in the direction that makes sense. Like, hey, did some research. This looks like the option for me. And then give them the reasons why. It's like, I think this is the option for me because, one, it has this ability. Two, it has that ability. Three, it does this. Four, I've done some research and the reviews I've found online indicate that it's adequate. Right? Give. In that way, you are not only being a self-advocate of what you need, but also you're partnering with them. Right? It doesn't have to be adversarial. My doctor took a bit of convincing about the note because he was like, but that's not scientific. I'm like, yeah, I appreciate what I'm asking for. Isn't really, I can't, can't quantify it in a scientific method per se. And if you really want to waste the money for an auditory assessment, I'm okay with that. But I don't see the need, right? All I'm, I'm not asking for a medical note to be working Monday to Friday, 8 to 3.30, you know, I'm not asking for a medical note that I don't work any time before 8.45 in the morning and no time after 6 o'clock at night. You know, I'm not asking for some of the arbitrary bullshittery notes I've seen people try to produce um, that tries to say that they can only do this at this time or only do that at that time. I've seen some of the things that people try to produce in the form of medical notes, like, you know, I have to be home to give him my cat medication. Well, A, I don't have a cat, and B, my cat that doesn't exist doesn't need medication. I just need a better headset, and I just need a note from you to give my work permission to spend money. That's it. There's no way this can come back on you. So him and I had about a 10-minute conversation. I was able to put his fears at rest. Like, this has no way to come back on you. I just need your note to give my work permission to spend money. That's it. That's all I need. He was like, but it's not scientific. And like, again, I know. But I need a hard shell, noise, a pro, just right proper noise canceling headset, and we'll get onto it from there. Now, will the headset that I think will work work? There's no guarantees. Again, the only certainty with stroke recovery is uncertainty. So, the 
the past two months have been very challenging. The past two months have been very difficult at times. The past two months have had moments of sheer anxiety, terror, dread. Because for those of you that don't know my story, I had my stroke at work. Um, I am almost required at least once a day to walk right by this place where I had my stroke. I, I kind of try to avoid that place now. I don't get some really bad mojo from that spot. Some bad juju, right? Some just bad vibes. Just I realize that's anxiety, and I realize that will pass in time. Again, I don't know how long that'll take. But ultimately, for all the challenges, hurdles, stumbles, obstacles that have been in my way, a little bit of stubbornness, sometimes too stubborn for my own good, a little bit of determination, see also stubbornness, um, a little bit of need, a little bit of need to prove that broken crayons still color, so to speak. Um, you know, I, a little bit of, I need to prove, I need to prove that I can still do my job. I need to prove that, and it's not to me, right? Um, cause, well, okay. Yeah, sure. It is a little bit for me. Yeah, that's true. There is some need, need to prove to me. However, I know not everybody in that building is going to be a supporter of me getting better. Um, I know there are people that fully expect that I'm only good to make t-shirts. So I need to prove those individuals wrong because they're shitheads. Um, I need to prove that I still have value, still have worth, can still do the job. Right. Um, so I'm a little bit determined. See also stubborn. Um, and I'm a bit of an A-type personality. I'm a bit of a hard charger. I want to make sure that I'm good at my game. I'm, I'm the best that I can be. So it gets difficult, right? I have to temper my own need, want, desire to be able to perform at the exact same level as I did per, did before um, to being respectful and mindful to the deficits that I might be experiencing with the caveat that I don't know what is going to be like in the next 20 minutes. I, that's sort of a thing. I don't know what's going to happen in the next 20 minutes and something I'm getting used to. Right. And that's just something I'm getting used to. So on that note, I just like to say thank you to the people out there at work. If you happen to watch this, um, for your support, thank you for your confidence. Um, thank you for overlooking my bad days because I know my bad days, they don't look pretty. Um, thank you for just, just being there, right? There's a few small, small select people that I trust. Um, and, and they've been some of my biggest supporters. Um, and they still check in from time to time. And for those of you that do still check in from time to time, that is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. I, um, I know you're all concerned. Dick, no one really wants to see me stroke out again. Because <laughs> I know I scared some people that day, uh, in, including me. On that note, I'm going to end the video. going to land the plane, so to speak. So if you happen to see or know anyone that is either currently going through your own post-stroke journey or you happen to know, see someone that is supporting someone going through their own post-stroke journey, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel up to them. They might get some value out of this. Right? Uh, if there's something you want to see me cover in the form of a topic, um, I'm researching one uh, right now about statins, statin-based medication and mental health issues. Um, I'm doing a couple others as well because uh, people have mentioned it either in comments, either in my channel or on one of the Facebook groups I belong to. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, someone that appears to be having a neurological event, looks like it could be a stroke, they appear befuddled, confused, they can't keep their balance, they're having eye problems, they can't see out of one eye, they can't see in color, they only see grayscale, they see just a little dot of the world, they can't move their eyes left, right, up, down, um, someone's having facial droop, uh, someone that can't raise both arms equally, effectively, or at all, someone that can't 
um, smile equally effectively or at all, but have a slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. They um, have the inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.